seems like most of the questions are about either uh, did I sleep with Kelly Bundy and I try to explain to them, well, Kelly Bundy's a fictional character, and I, nor did I sleep with Christina Applegate, or what's it like to have Meatloaf as a father-in-law. Those seem to be the two most popular. I've written some pretty ridiculous lyrics in my life, specifically on the SOD record, and I suddenly had an idea, like, what if I had an acoustic guitar and I just kind of played some chords and then kind of spoke and deconstructed words, the lyrics to, like, the song Kill Yourself, I actually think would be pretty damn funny, actually hearing it broken down that way, not like yelled at you in a hardcore version, but actually just kind of spoken at you very nicely. That's something I may try and do at some point. Probably next year sometime. We're, I mean, it's infancy stages now. We've got about 30 hours of interviews done. A lot of the stories I've been doing in my talk shows, I've been writing out and I, they're gonna be presented in a very different way in my book than that nobody else has done. So that's why I'm not gonna give it away now, what, what I'm doing, but there's a, a large chunk of the book that I'm writing as well, and the way those stories are gonna be presented are, are gonna be different than every other rock book out there. Anything from, you know, of course, calling me by the wrong band, you know, aren't you the guy from System of a Down? Aren't you the guy from the Chili Peppers? Aren't you the guy from Pantera? Aren't you the singer of live? The list goes on and on and on. That's always a really good way to really make me wanna have a conversation and you know interact with you. The best is when people argue with me. And they say, you're the dude from the Chili Peppers. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm like, really dude, I'm not. And this was in a Circuit City parking lot once in, in Los Angeles. And the guy goes, come on dude, I know it's you. There's no one else around. I was like, oh my God. So I said to this guy, I, I said, dude, go into that record store right now and go to the Chili Peppers records and you go find a picture of me on one of those records and go home and see what an <laughs> you just made out of yourself and I got my car and I drove away. Or another guy argued me once when he said, what band are you in? And I, I was like, Anthrax. No, that's not it. What, what am I supposed to do? I, at that point, I have to wash my hands of it. It's not my responsibility to educate you. Killers from Iron Maiden is definitely my favorite of all time, I'd have to say. I bought the first Maiden album when it came out, and of course that album cover is great. Bought it without having any idea what they sounded like as a band, but just knew it had to be good because Eddie was on the cover, and I took the record home, and of course I was right. But then Killers comes, and to me that's, that's the epitome. It's the greatest heavy metal album cover uh, of all time. I'd have to probably go with Number of the Beasts a second, and then like Judas Priest held them for leather, third. Exodus, absolutely. You know, they were there right at the beginning with us and Slayer and Metallica. They were right there. People know Kirk was in Exodus before he was in Metallica. I think Bonded by Blood, of all our debut records, I actually, that's my favorite of all of the, you know, whether it's you think of the big four or whatever, Bonded by Blood is the best debut album from any of that, of that time. I mean, I just think they're the most underrated and people should definitely pay more attention. There would be no Anthrax if there was no Black Sabbath. I mean, um, it, it, as a kid growing up and from hearing Sabbath from the first time, they, I mean, you know, they've ruled my life since I heard them in the late 70s. I can compare the first five Sabbath records to the Beatles because what they were doing had never been done before. Everything they did invented new territory. It, it, everything they did broke new ground. Um, there was no touchstone for what they were doing. When you, when you hear the songs in the first Black Sabbath record, or, or you know, the first five Black Sabbath records, Nobody did that before. Nobody was making those noises. The most important thing in any band is originality and the blaze your own trail. And Sabbath did it first. And uh, um, because basically everything we do comes from Black Sabbath. Just like everything before our generations came from the Beatles and then before that everything came from the blues or whatever. Everything we do comes from Black Sabbath. It had nothing to do with anything. It was, uh, we had a piece of music that didn't have a title. Uh, you know, when you're arranging music, sometimes you give stuff a working title. And for some reason, the working title of this whatever piece of music at the time, I just started calling it Judas Priest because it just had this vibe to me. And then at some point during the process of writing worship music is when Priest had announced they were gonna retire and they were done and this was it and all that. And uh, so that's when the kind of the bell went off and I was like, you know what? Let's call the song Judas Priest and let's make it our tribute to one of our favorite bands of all time. So it's not like I wrote lyrics about Judas Priest, although I, there is a section of the song where I tried to get in as many Priest song titles as I could uh, lyrically and actually make it work, which was kind of a puzzle and really fun for me to do. But um, it, lyrically, it's not like Judas Priest is great, we love them, it's not that, but 
my in my head, what better way to pay tribute to one of our favorite bands of all time than just writing a really cool metal song in their honor? Well, the Beatles is the first. I mean, you know, if you're not listening to the Beatles, you're not listening to music. You know, if if you don't educate yourself on the Beatles, whether you're a fan or a musician, you know, or a guy in a band, there's no, there's nothing better. I didn't learn that till also. I as a kid, I was not into the Beatles. I didn't dislike the Beatles. I was just. As a teenager, I was in hard rock and, and metal, and I didn't go back, but I loved Cheap Trick. And then, of course, when you find out, well, everything Cheap Trick does is basically, you know, from the Beatles, and I'm like, God, I gotta I got start listening to the Beatles one of these days. I really gotta listen. You know, of course I knew the Beatles, and I knew a, a hundred Beatles songs, but until you go and you get all the records and you really get deep, it, it'll never be done again. It can never be done again. I can't fathom how they did what they did, how they wrote, it just, it kind of blows my mind. And I listen to a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, soul, a lot of R&B. Uh, for me, Otis Redding is one of the greatest songwriters of all time. And uh, um, I think people should listen to Otis. There's an aggression and there's an energy in his music uh, that I've never heard anywhere else. And uh, I mean, what a voice on that guy. I mean, he died at 27 and he sounded, you know, twice his age. I mean, what a powerful, instrument he had. Um, Otis Redding is incredible. And ACDC, not a metal band, but straight up rock and roll and you know, but I think most metalheads probably listen to ACDC already. I would love to, you know, anytime we've ever done it over the years since 91 and 92, it, it, the magic has never waned. Even up to a few weeks ago with Chuck on stage with us in LA, the force of nature that that becomes when we do that is unlike anything I've ever been a part of musically.